Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I want to apologize to NVIDIA. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. Um, I'm not, I'm not crying. <laughs> Remember when Apple showed this type of graph on the screen on the M1 Ultra release? Can you see on the bottom right corner, there's RTX 3090. So basically what that graph shows here is that it uses less power and is faster than the RTX 3090. I've got a system over here that's got the RTX 3090 in and then we've got the M1 Ultra Max Studio here, the 64 core GPU inside the M1 Ultra chip. So then, was Apple lying about this graph or is the M1 Ultra really faster than the RTX 3090? Let's find out right after this. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty-free license, which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high-end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily, so you'll never run out of choice. Now also featuring Artlist personal plan that covers all your social channels, pay monthly or save even more when paid annually. Your license lasts forever for all public projects during the subscription period and the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below you'll get two months for free so check out Atlas in the video description below so first of all we're gonna be testing Geekbench 5 and let's have a look at the open CL CUDA and metal benchmarks and let's see where the graphics card basically land run Apple computer OpenCL M1 Ultra run. So both systems have completed the OpenCL score on Asus side here, Asus RTX 1390 TUF here. We have 223,281 and Apple has 87,790. Four. Interestingly, on Apple side, this is one of the highest scores I've ever gotten with it. I've actually ran loads of benchmarks and then calculated the average on both of them separately. And this is one of the highest ones I have seen. So let's run the metal score as well. And then on Windows side, let's do the CUDA score. Obviously on Windows side, we have a Vulcan score as well, but we're just going to be looking at uh, CUDA at the moment. Okay, so the M1 Ultra finished the Geekbench 5 metal score and the score is 102,503. Looking at the Windows side, we have 256,430. So if we look at the percentage of which is better, the RTX 3090 is about 244% better than the M1 Ultra in CUDA and metal score comparison. In terms of OpenCL, the RTX 3090 is about 257% faster. Where does this M1 Ultra with 64 cores actually slot in? If we are looking at some of the other benchmarks, I have run almost every single graphics card in this benchmark, then we can see that the RTX 3060 is roughly where this uh, 64 core M1 Ultra is on par with. If we're looking at the RTX 3050, then the 3050 is roughly about 28% slower in the CUDA metal score and then about 15% slower in the open CL score. So in terms of Geekbench 5 GPU score, the RTX 3090 gets a big win over here. Next off, a Blender. This is Blender 3.1, which is actually M1 or M, you know, Apple Silicon optimized. So for this test, we're actually gonna be checking the M1 Ultra GPU. So it can use the GPU inside there to do the benchmark. And then at the same time, we're gonna go on the Windows system and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Okay, as you can see, 3.1 monster scenes, not 12900K, but RTX 3019. Let's start the benchmark. Now, the interesting thing over here is that the Windows system, overall system power draw at the moment is around 450 watts in total. But then on the, this Apple side over here, I actually are running this Apple M1 Studio into the socket and then there is an actual measurement in between so we can see how much it's pulling from the wall and it's running the classroom benchmarking scene at the moment and looking at this camera here the overall system draw is 83 watts which is pretty good I mean in terms of power consumption between those two systems the M1 Ultra 
is super, super efficient in terms of the power. As you can see, 83 watts overall pulled from the socket. The system is hardly warm to say the least and it's completed the system. On Windows side, we're doing the classroom scene at the moment and we're pulling 450 watts from the socket, the overall system. So that's uh, quite a lot more on the Windows side in terms of the power draw. Okay, benchmarks are in and the monster scene, we've got 2,788 junk shop scene is 1627 classroom is 1423 and if we are looking at the m1 ultra side you can see that our monster is 568 junk shop 278 and classroom 273 which is much much less if we look at the actual percentage difference here then we can see that the 3090 is 489% faster in the monster scene, 580% better in the junk shop scene, and 510% better in the classroom scene. Now, if you've seen just a little bit slightly different benchmarks here on the screen now, that's what I have calculated an average of at least three tests. So it might score a little bit lower, a little bit higher sometimes, but on average, these are the scores that these GPUs get. Also, the more interesting thing is here, if we compare the scores from RTX 3050, which is the lowest of the RTX 3000 series cards from Nvidia, then you can see that the RTX 3050 is 35% faster in the monster scene, 70% faster in the junk shop scene, and about 46% faster on the classroom scene. So even the small RTX 3050, where is it now? This guy over here is faster than the M1 Ultra from Apple. 64 core M1 Ultra that costs extra thousand dollars to upgrade from 48 cores to 64 cores. That's a little bit interesting here. So if you are working in Blender or 3D, then the M1 Ultra really isn't a very good pick for you. And the RTX 3090 gets a big, big win again over the M1 Ultra. But even the RTX 3050 gets quite a big win over the M1 Ultra in Blender. Next off, V-Ray. And we're going to try V-Ray 5 here. We're going to go Virtual Apple. Now, this isn't optimized for the uh, M1 Silicon. Uh, I don't think it is. But the thing is, if people use V-Ray, this is the performance at the moment. Just to show you, like, if you're planning to use V-Ray or that type of thing, then this is the type of performance you can expect from these two GPUs or CPUs. So if you go to GPU CUDA, over here as well nvidia rtx 1390 let's go let's see the benchmarks results m1 ultra finished 485 interestingly i just kept an eye on the actual wattage meter over there and then i saw actually more than on the blender pulled from the socket about 95 or something like that so it's still much less than this guy over here so 485 and then on this side, we have 2,089. If we're looking at the average of both, then we can see that the RTX 3090 is 429% faster than the M1 Ultra. And the RTX 3050 is also 13% faster than the M1 Ultra with 64 core GPU. So then, in V-Ray, the M1 Ultra gets another L and the RTX 3090 gets another win. Let's go back to the graph that Apple showed over there and you can see that Apple also says that it draws 200 watts less power, but also it also shows it's higher than the RTX 3090. Now, out of all the benchmarks that I have done, I personally can't find a single benchmark that the RTX 3090 scores lower than the M1 Ultra. Unless we start looking at the encoder side, then obviously the M1 Ultra has much better encoders because there's lots more media engines and hardware acceleration for video editing. But in terms of graphics power, graphics processing power, the RTX 3090 wins every single time. And interestingly, because of the RT cores and some of the CUDA cores that are on the NVIDIA RTX 30 series cards and other 
you know, series cards of Nvidia cards as well. The RTX 3050 in Blender, for example, and even V-Ray performs higher than this M1 Ultra. Now, we either need to wait for some more optimization for the M1 Ultra chip or Apple literally lied on stage. Now, I don't know. You tell me what does it look like to you. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. But also to touch point on the power draw setting here. Even though your GPU is very, very power efficient in terms of performance per watt, that doesn't give you everything. Because that doesn't mean that you can scale that power per watt higher, 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 higher and just, you know, put two M1 Ultras together and get more and more and more because the scaling never works, you know, linearly. It works that the more you put together of the different, you know, GPUs and cores, you're going to start to lose the performance and the actual like multiplier isn't like two times when you put two of the M1 Ultras together. So if we are thinking that, okay, if Apple matched the actual power draw of the RTX 3050, would, would Apple get a higher score? I don't know, we'd have to wait for Apple engineers to do that, but most likely this is not gonna happen because there are some hardware and some software and other limitations why you can't just scale it up like that. Otherwise, everyone would be doing it and it would be very easy, but scaling the GPUs like that isn't that simple. But in what the M1 Ultra absolutely wins this comparison is the noise. Like it's absolutely silent in operation, never gets hot. I mean, this RTX 3090 is hot even at idle. Like it's probably about 40, 50 something degrees. It's like warm to the touch in here. And I've got an open side panel just to show you. And the whole system is much, much louder than this M1 Ultra. So if noise is important to you, obviously this guy is a much better option. So then in conclusion, I personally think that graph was the dodgiest graph that Apple has been pulled in there because they're not showing which benchmark they use and in my experience this M1 Ultra does not win the RTX 3090. I don't know what type of benchmark you should be using. If you know which benchmark Apple was using let me know in the comments below I'd love to see that but in real world as a creator if you are in 3D that's what you would most likely use an RTX 1390 for or video editing, then the RTX 3090 is a much better card. In terms of GPU effects, what we can see in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or, you know, V-Ray, Blender, any of this, if you're doing high-end creative work and you need a lot of graphics power, then the M1 Ultra isn't quite the graphics card for you. RTX 3090, a much better pick. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.